From the bark to the heart. In Canada, the abundance of our forest resources is the envy of many countries and for many generations has been a source of pride. These natural wonders constantly enrich our lives in so many ways. Because of dedicated craftsmen who each day work to offer us top quality hardwood veneer and plywood, wood is more popular than ever in our homes. Let's take a look, step by step, how this true Canadian resource has changed our lives for the better. As soon as the logs arrive from the forest, they're classified by species, inspected, and kept under optimal humidity conditions to avoid any deterioration during the warm season. The first step is debarking. Taking great care not to damage the log, the bark is peeled off with the evenness that only the sure hands of an experienced technician can accomplish. The bark is recycled to be used as fuel or to be shredded into raw materials for other industries. The key to the operation, how and where a log should be cut, depends on the slicing method used to produce the veneer. Modern sawing methods allow us to place the log in the best position to obtain the highest quality without loss and above all without damaging the wood. Each log already identified or registered has its own barcode. This enables the different parts of the log to be easily identified at any time. The log will be cut in half or into quarters, and each half or quarter log will travel through each step of the process together. The next crucial step in the manufacture of quality veneer involves soaking the logs. To soften the fibers, which is necessary for uniform slicing, the cut logs are put into baths or steamers and completely submerged at temperatures ranging from 80 to 100 degrees Celsius for a period lasting anywhere from 12 to 72 hours. The success of the different cutting methods largely depends on the consistency of the wood fibers. Everything from the hardness of the wood and the size of the logs to the fragility of certain species of wood and weather conditions affects the water temperature for soaking. For maximum effectiveness, the log should be cut within an hour of soaking. At this point, the half or quarter logs can be sliced. To ensure that the veneer lots of the same tree are not separated, Tags corresponding to a log's barcode are carefully attached and scrupulously verified at each stage of the process. Let's take a look at the different ways of cutting the wood. Flat slicing is the most common cutting method. The half log is positioned with the heart side flat against the flitch table, solidly held and analyzed to determine its particular features. The tools are then adjusted to best take advantage of each log's attributes. The operator then chooses the slicing speed based on the wood species, its hardness or fragility, and the thickness of the veneer required. Slicing is done parallel to a line through its center. This cut produces a light, multicolored, and very distinctive pattern. The slices obtained by this method are always uniform. The blades ensure a clean cut without damaging the wood, no matter what thickness is chosen. The quarter slicing method produces a series of straight lines. The quarter log is mounted on the flitch table so that the log's growth rings hit the blade at right angles. 
This cut is commonly known as a rift cut. The log's size, its natural shape, the particular features of the species of wood, and of course, the thickness of the veneer, all determine the rotation speed of the log itself. For example, a quarter log of oak, like this one, will be completely sliced after a few minutes. The cut is done at a slight angle from the position of the quarter log. This method results in a comb or rift grain effect in the different species of oak. The sheets of veneer always remain in their natural order as they emerge. The half round slicing is a variation of rotary cutting. The grain effects produced by this cut have the characteristics of both the rotary and flat cut veneer. The cut slightly crosses the annual growth rings. Here again, veneer sheets are maintained in order as they emerge so that all parts of the original log are kept together. One by one, the slices of veneer carefully enter the dryer. They will dry evenly within a few minutes. As the veneer slices leave the dryer, they are once more reassembled to reconstruct the log which never separates. The identification tags are subject to several verifications. The last step involves examining and classifying the veneer. An expert carefully inspects each log to make sure customers receive quality veneer that meets strict standards. In lengthwise slicing, a stationary blade slices a board of flat lumber lengthwise. Before slicing, the boards are put in a steaming room where the hot steam will soften the wood to make slicing easier. The time spent in the steaming room depends on the species of wood. Typically, steaming will take from 6 to 48 hours. Let's take a look at a totally different way of producing veneer, rotary cutting. The logs are soaked as soon as they arrive at the plant. This ensures a soft bark which allows for a very precise peel. The log first goes through a metal detector because a single nail remaining in the wood could ruin a cutter blade worth thousands of dollars. In order to determine a cutting position that will optimize the slicing, it is possible to analyze a log on all its faces with a laser. The information is then transmitted to adjustable arms that will position themselves according to the structure of the log. The log rotates towards the blade and is peeled in long, wide sheets like a roll of unwinding tissue. Depending on the temperature and the particular characteristics of the wood species, the rotation speed may also be modified. This method creates veneer with very different ring patterns. The large rolls of veneer obtained from four or five logs proceed toward the cutter before entering the dryer. The veneer is unrolled very slowly and carefully cut into standard sizes. It may also be cut depending on certain characteristics of the wood. 
the sheets simultaneously undergo another quality control check. On this machine, a protective tape is added to the edges of the veneer sheets to prevent tearing as sheets are handled further down the line. Then, an inspector grades the veneer sheets according to industry standards. The sheets would then be sold as is or jointed depending on the client's needs. Clipping the sheets is the initial step of the splicing process. They are cut with a guillotine to obtain sheets that are even in length. A similar clipping or cutting procedure is performed to produce a sheet of a proper width on a double guillotine. Of course, the quality of the veneer panels depends on the precision and angle of the cut. For example, using state-of-the-art technologies such as infrared rays lets us determine the width with absolute precision. The sides are also cut using a double knife guillotine. The panels are then headed toward the glue machine which bonds the edges of the sheets. After passing inspection, the sheets are now ready for assembly. Next comes the actual splicing. Splicing can be achieved through two methods. Here we see how the sheets are assembled to produce a book match. The sheets are placed laterally into the machine. This method allows the production of larger volumes. Here we see another way of splicing. The lengthwise jointing machine performs vertical jointing only. This machine produces balanced match material, which means that the coupons of a face will all have the same width. The panels of veneer are now ready. A wide range of matchings are available. Here are a few. A whole piece panel is a single sheet of rotary cut veneer. For a book match, every other component is turned as if it were the pages of a book. In a slip match, the adjacent sheets of veneer are placed side by side without being turned. Here, one out of two components is rotated at a 180 degree angle and is spliced with a second remaining as is. What we call a pleasing match is where the components are matched based on the similarity of their colors rather than their grain characteristics. Random match is where the components are assembled without matching the wood grains. Special patterns can be made such as diamond points, herringbone, or V-match. We can also create a reverse diamond point where the design goes outward. Also, to obtain this effect, the components are arranged in a 45 degree angle following the wood grains. To obtain an eight-piece sunburst match, Four out of eight points are turned to create a continuous pattern. This effect allows the appearance of solid wood by interchanging the sheets, often at a specific customer's request. Finally, to create a rustic effect, the sheets are interchanged in order to emphasize the various natural characteristics of the wood species. Let's watch how our veneer is applied to panels. 
The panel goes through a glue spreader which uniformly applies adhesive to both sides. Whether using particle board or plywood, the bonding is done in the same way. After that, the sheets of veneer are placed on top. The technique used to actually manufacture plywood is the same. The sheets of veneer are placed in rotation, alternating the grains horizontally and vertically to ensure the panel's strength. Hardwood veneer can be laminated to several types of core material. Veneer, particle board, medium density fiberboard, a combination of these cores, or to solid lumber. There are also other types of core materials available from various manufacturers. The following step is temporary. Pre-pressing temporarily fixes the panels so they can be more easily handled. The panels are then pressed. Heat and heavy pressure are closely monitored to ensure that all pieces are permanently fixed. With the veneer now firmly in place, the panel is sawn at right angles. However, before the panel is cut along its length and width, the panel's measurements are first checked and the cutting angle then properly adjusted. To rigorously adhere to the plywood industry's quality standards, each panel is inspected and repaired using razors or wood filler, depending on the defects. Finally, for a perfectly smooth and even finish, each panel is sanded on both sides before leaving the plant. Upon exiting the sander, the boards are inspected on both sides. The inspector then decides whether the plywood is ready for shipment, whether it can be repaired, or if it must be discarded. There are almost no limits when it comes to veneer. Maple oak, birch and alder, cherry and ash. Whatever wood is chosen, veneers help to improve the work of many craftsmen in countless other industries, both here and abroad. In fact, Canadian hardwood veneers and plywoods are now more and more sought after. Exports of these products are now playing a vital role in the strategic development of companies within our industry. Only by taking great care of our natural wealth of forest resources and by depending on a highly skilled and continuously trained workforce in the hardwood, plywood and veneer industry can a solid foundation be laid for an even brighter tomorrow.